Dick Yingling took a chance when he took over the struggling family business in 1985. He borrowed millions and built two more plants. Today alone, Yingling will knock out about 2,000 barrels of beer. That's roughly 25,600 cases of cans just like this. About 50 years ago, they were selling that much in a month. And he pushed a radical word-of-mouth marketing campaign on the Penn State College campus. That helped give Yingling a cult status, and now fans flock to the brewery every day for tours. That was a report I did back in 2005, visiting the Yingling Brewery in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. The brewery is now in its 190th year. It's still going strong, and it's still family-run. It was started back in 1829. The brewery today is managed by the family's sixth generation, which is made up of four sisters. Two of those sisters are with us today, Jen and Wendy Yangling. And ladies, thank you so much for being here today. Good, Good morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks I, for I mean, I'm so thrilled to see how Yingling is doing and how it's continuing to thrive and continuing to yeah. kind of push things. Uh, it is America's oldest independent brewery at 190 years old. It, it survived even prohibition, which is kind of amazing. And, I just wonder, did you guys always plan on going into the family business when you were growing up? I don't think we necessarily did, um, but I think the fact that we are now embarking on our 190th year, um, this is something that's so special for us and uh, it's so rewarding to be here. And the longer we're involved in the business, the more appreciation we have for our ancestors who have survived things such as, uh, as prohibition. Yeah, I mean, uh, surviving prohibition, did they tell you how they actually made it through that? Is there kind of a family book that says, here's what to do in case of a complete crisis? Well, we have a building across the street so not only did we make near beer during Prohibition, but our great-grandfather had the insight to build a dairy across the street. So we ah. had a creamery business, which was successful in the family till about the mid-80s. Right, let, me, let me ask you two. If you didn't really plan on getting into the family business growing up, did you know what it was, how big of a deal it was to have the Yingling Brewery as your family business? You know, we grew up in the 70s and the early 80s, so we went through some down years. Um, we really didn't start to see a, a jump in our production until the mid-90s, uh, which is when we were out of college and then the timing was right for us to start our careers in the business. Yeah. When you went to college, what did people think? Because that, that may be the coolest thing. I would think as a little kid, it's great to be uh, have a candy shop that you own. Yeah. yeah. It's, You're in college. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I'm sure we could tell some Very stories. recognizable, <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys are launching a new product just this past year. It's uh, uh, Yingling Golden Pilsner. Yep. And I have to say, it caught me off guard because I know the lager really well. Everybody knows Yingling for our lager and our light lager and black and tan. And this is a beer that caters to a refreshment space. It's something that's light and golden in color and very refreshing to drink. And for us personally, it kind of caters to the types of drinks that we wanted to enjoy. You know, the big breweries ha have had some issues because Americans seem to be drinking less beer, at, le at least less beer of the kind of big mass produced stuff. Where do you guys fall in that? Because I don't think of you as a microbrewer, but you're definitely not, not, not a bud either. What, what, what has happened to your yeah. demand from your customers? Yeah. We've typically characterized ourselves as a regional brewer, so we're in 22 states now. We're still not nationwide, and we're competing against the likes of national and international brands. So, you know, we feel like we fill in a nice spot there with a regional brand, and that gives us the ability to focus on our local markets and still, you know, Pennsylvania is important to us, Tampa is important to us because we have a brewery down there, and we like that niche where we are.